Salt, a humble substance we often take for granted, found in every kitchen, on every dining table. Yet, in the spiritual realm, salt is far from ordinary. Throughout the Bible, salt emerges as a powerful symbol with deep spiritual significance. It represents a force that transcends its everyday use, carrying with it divine authority and purpose. From the ancient rituals of the Israelites to the teachings of Jesus himself, salt is portrayed as a potent weapon in the arsenal of spiritual warfare. But why would something so seemingly mundane hold such a powerful role in our spiritual lives? To answer this question, we must look beyond the surface, beyond the simple grains of salt, and into the profound truths embedded in Scripture. God has always used the ordinary to accomplish the extraordinary. Just as he used a shepherd boy to defeat a giant or a humble carpenter's son to save the world, he also uses salt to reveal deep truths about his kingdom, his power, and his relationship with us. So, what is the significance of salt in the Bible, and why should we as believers take notice? The answer lies in understanding what Jesus meant when he called his followers the salt of the earth. When Jesus declared, You are the salt of the earth, Matthew 5.13, he wasn't merely giving a poetic metaphor. He was ascribing a profound identity and purpose to his disciples. To be the salt of the earth is to carry a spiritual potency that can influence, preserve, and transform the world. Just as salt permeates and changes whatever it touches, believers are called to impact the world around them. Salt, in ancient times, was a precious commodity. It was used not only for flavoring, but also for preserving food, purifying water, and even as currency. To be the salt of the earth means we are to bring God's flavor to a bland world, his preservation to a decaying culture, and his purity to a world stained by sin. It is a call to a life of purpose, influence, and transformation. Jesus' words are both a blessing and a challenge. A blessing because he has chosen us to play a crucial role in his divine plan, and a challenge because this role requires us to engage actively in the spiritual battle that rages around us. We are called to stand in the gap, to be agents of change, to break curses, and to release blessings. How do we do this? By understanding the deeper spiritual power that salt represents. In the realm of spiritual warfare, salt is more than a symbol. It is a tool. The Bible offers numerous examples where salt is used to break curses and bring blessings. Take, for instance, the story of Elisha in 2 Kings 2.19-22. The people of Jericho were suffering because their water was bad, causing death and barrenness in the land. Elisha took a bowl, filled it with salt, and threw it into the spring. Immediately, the waters were purified, the curse was broken, and life was restored. This story is more than an ancient miracle. It is a divine illustration of how God uses salt to demonstrate His authority over all creation. Just as the salt purified the waters of Jericho, God empowers us his salt of the earth to purify, restore, and bring healing to broken lives and cursed circumstances. The same God who used salt in the days of Elisha still uses it today to bring freedom and blessing. He invites us to step into this reality, to take hold of the authority he has given us, and to apply it in our spiritual battles. By faith, we can use the power of salt to break generational curses, restore relationships, and bring new life to areas of barrenness in our own lives. But this power is not automatic. It requires faith, understanding, and intentional action. How do we apply the principles of salt in our spiritual lives? How do we tap into its God-given power? The answer begins with recognizing its divine purpose. The key to unlocking the spiritual power of salt lies in understanding its intended purpose. Salt is not a magic charm or a ritualistic tool. It is a representation of God's covenant his justice, and his purity. When used with the right heart and understanding, it becomes a powerful instrument in our spiritual arsenal. To apply the power of salt in your life, start by seeing it as a tangible reminder of God's presence and power. Just as Elisha cast salt into the spring with a declaration of faith, so can you bring the salt of God's word, his promises, and his spirit into the situations you face. Speak his truth over your life, declare his promises over your family, and trust in his power to break every curse and bring every blessing. But remember, using salt as a spiritual weapon is not about sprinkling it around your house or carrying it in your pocket. 
It is about understanding and embracing the identity Jesus gave you as the salt of the earth. It's about being an agent of change, a force for good, a preserver of righteousness in a decaying world. As you begin to grasp this identity, you'll naturally be led to understand the deeper purpose God has for salt. The journey of using salt as a spiritual tool is about aligning with God's divine purpose for it. When we begin to see ourselves as God sees us, as his salt in the world, we start to uncover the divine purpose behind this seemingly simple element. Salt's ability to preserve, purify, and flavor is a reflection of what God desires for his people. He calls us to preserve the truth in a world of deception, to purify our hearts and communities with his righteousness, and to flavor our surroundings with the love and grace of Christ. But more than that, understanding the divine purpose of salt helps us realize that every part of God's creation is intentional. Just as he created salt with a purpose, he created each of us with a unique role in his grand design. Knowing this, we begin to see that salt is not only a tool in our hands, but a mirror reflecting God's broader purposes for humanity. This revelation sets the stage for understanding the three main spiritual attributes of salt, each of which illuminates a different facet of God's character and his intentions for us as his followers. As we explore these attributes, we will see how God's design for salt in the physical world parallels his design for us in the spiritual realm. By understanding these connections, we prepare ourselves to delve deeper into the divine mysteries of salt, its role in scripture, and how it applies to our daily lives as believers. This journey is not just about learning facts. It is about experiencing transformation and discovering the depth of God's purposes for each of us. And so, as we move forward, we are invited to continue exploring how God uses salt to purify, establish eternal covenants, and demonstrate His justice, a journey that will take us into the very heart of His plans for our lives and His world. From the moment God spoke the world into existence, every element of creation was infused with divine intention. The stars in the sky, the waves of the ocean, and even the tiniest grain of salt were created with purpose. The Bible reminds us in Ecclesiastes 3.1, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. God does nothing by accident. Every part of his creation serves a purpose in his grand design, including salt. When we look at salt, we might only see a common mineral. Yet in the spiritual realm, it is anything but ordinary. It carries a divine assignment, reflecting God's intention for it to be much more than a simple seasoning. Just as each of us was created with a unique purpose in God's plan, so was salt. It is a symbol of God's covenant, His justice, and His purification, embodying profound spiritual truths that speak to our own purpose as believers. But to understand the depth of this purpose, we must see how salt's unique role in God's divine plan mirrors the attributes He desires to cultivate in us. This understanding helps us recognize that salt's spiritual symbolism is intertwined with God's purpose for humanity. Salt's role in the divine plan is both unique and multifaceted. It is used throughout scripture in ways that demonstrate its special status as a symbol of God's work among his people. Salt preserves what would otherwise decay, purifies what is unclean, and enhances flavor, making even the blandest food delicious. Each of these characteristics represents a spiritual truth about our relationship with God. As salt preserves food from spoilage, so God calls us to preserve His truth in a world that often distorts and disregards it. We are to guard against spiritual decay, standing firm against the corrosive influence of sin. As salt purifies, God calls us to live lives of purity, continually seeking His righteousness and cleansing ourselves from all impurity. And just as salt brings out flavor, we are called to bring the flavor of God's love, joy, and peace to a world that is often tasteless and you woo. But salt's unique role goes even deeper. In Leviticus 2.13, God commanded that all grain offerings be seasoned with salt, signifying that every sacrifice must be preserved by His covenant. This act of salting was a tangible reminder of God's unwavering promise to His people, a covenant that is eternal pure and unbreakable. Here, salt is not just a physical element, but a spiritual symbol of God's faithfulness and commitment. By understanding this unique role of salt in God's divine plan, we begin to see how it represents His authority over all creation and His intentionality in every aspect of life. 
This realization leads us to explore the concept of authority that God has given to various elements of His creation. God's authority extends over all things, and He often grants specific authority to elements within His creation to accomplish His will. Throughout Scripture, we see that God uses natural elements, such as fire, water, wind, and even salt, as instruments of His purpose. Each of these elements carries a specific authority to act on His behalf in the world. For instance, fire represents God's purifying power and His righteous judgment, as seen in the burning bush that was not consumed, or the pillar of fire that led the Israelites through the wilderness. Water is a symbol of cleansing, new life, and transformation, as evident in the flood of Noah or the waters of baptism. In a similar manner, salt is given authority to act as a purifier, a preserver, and a symbol of covenant. When God grants authority to an element like salt, He is demonstrating His sovereignty and His ability to use any part of His creation to fulfill His divine purposes. By using salt to represent His covenant, justice, and purity, God is declaring that His authority permeates every level of existence, from the grand cosmic events to the smallest particles of His creation. Salt becomes a tangible manifestation of God's power and presence, serving as a tool to accomplish His will in the spiritual and Recognizing this authority is essential for understanding how salt can be used in our spiritual lives. It helps us see that God has assigned specific roles to each part of His creation, and when we understand these roles, we can more effectively participate in His plan. This understanding naturally leads us to explore the multifaceted role of salt beyond just its physical properties. Salt is far more than a preservative. It has multiple roles that reflect the complexity of God's design. It is a purifier, a symbol of covenant, and even an agent of divine justice. These roles reveal the layered significance of salt and its capacity to represent different aspects of God's nature. As a purifier, salt is used in Scripture to cleanse and sanctify. In Exodus 30, 35, God instructed Moses to make a holy incense with salt, signifying its role in purifying the offerings made to God. This act of purification is not just about physical cleanliness, but a deeper cleansing of the heart and soul, reflecting God's desire for His people to be holy as He is holy. Salt is also a symbol of covenant. The covenant of salt, mentioned in Numbers 18.19 and 2 Chronicles 13.5, underscores the idea of permanence, loyalty, and unbreakable commitment. Just as salt does not decay or lose its preserving power over time, so God's promises remain steadfast and eternal. The covenant made with salt is an invitation to trust in God's faithfulness, knowing that His word endures forever. Furthermore, salt can act as an agent of divine justice. In the story of Lot's wife, who turned into a pillar of salt, Genesis 19.26, we see salt as a symbol of God's righteous judgment against sin. It serves as a stark reminder that God's justice is swift and unyielding, but also balanced with His mercy. This multifaceted role of salt helps us grasp the many dimensions of God's character and His dealings with humanity. Each of these roles, purifier, symbol of covenant, and agent of justice, offers us a deeper insight into how God uses salt to reflect His divine attributes. As we delve into these attributes, we gain a more profound appreciation of how God orchestrates all things for His glory, preparing us to understand the connection between these characteristics and the biblical examples that illustrate them. Now that we have begun to understand the divine purpose behind salt, we can see how it is far more than a common mineral. Salt serves as a unique reflection of God's nature and His dealings with humanity. It represents purification, covenant, and justice each pointing to a different aspect of His divine character. These attributes are not abstract theological concepts, but practical truths that we can apply in our daily lives. To prepare for this journey into the three spiritual attributes of salt, let us consider how each attribute, purification, covenant, and justice, reveals a specific part of God's heart and His desire for His people. Purification speaks to His desire for our holiness, Covenant reflects His unchanging faithfulness, and justice embodies His righteousness. As we explore these three attributes in the next topic, we will see how they are interconnected and how they can transform our understanding of God's plan for our lives. We will discover how the spiritual significance of salt can be applied to our personal walk with God.
leading us into deeper faith and greater obedience. This understanding sets the stage for delving into the scriptural examples that vividly demonstrate these attributes, bringing us closer to the heart of God and His purposes for us as His chosen people. In this way, we are prepared to move forward, uncovering the profound mysteries of salt and its place in the divine narrative. To understand salt's spiritual significance, we must first recognize its role as a purifying agent. In ancient times, salt was not only a vital preservative, but also a cleanser. It was used to purify wounds, clean household items, and even disinfect water. In the spiritual realm, salt represents God's power to cleanse and sanctify His people, removing impurities and setting them apart for His divine purposes. In Leviticus 2.13, God commands the Israelites to season all your grain offerings with salt. This command is more than a ritualistic detail. It is a profound symbol of purification and holiness. By adding salt to the offerings, the Israelites acknowledged their need for God's cleansing. It was a way of saying, God, we bring these offerings to you, but we know they must be purified by your hand to be acceptable in your sight. Just as salt cleanses, so does God's word. In Ephesians 5.26, the Apostle Paul speaks of Christ cleansing the church by the washing of water with the word. This cleansing is ongoing, continuous, and vital for our spiritual health. As we immerse ourselves in Scripture, we are like grain offerings seasoned with salt, purified by God's truth and made holy in His presence. But the purifying role of salt does not stop there. It also speaks to our responsibility as believers to live pure and holy lives. Jesus calls us the salt of the earth, Matthew 5.13 reminding us that we are to be agents of purification in a world tainted by sin. Our presence should purify our surroundings, bringing light to dark places, truth to deception, and righteousness to injustice. This calling is not passive. It requires active participation in God's work, aligning our lives with His. As we embrace our role as spiritual purifiers, we are naturally led to the second attribute of salt, its role in establishing covenants. Salt's second attribute in the spiritual realm is its role in establishing and sealing covenants. In ancient cultures, particularly in the Near East, salt was often used in ceremonies to symbolize the permanence and binding nature of agreements. To share salt with someone was to establish a bond of loyalty, a commitment that could not be broken. It was a sign of trust, fidelity, and unending friendship. This cultural practice is vividly reflected in the biblical concept of a covenant of salt. In Numbers 18 and 19, God declares to Aaron and his descendants that he has given them all the holy contributions that the people of Israel present to the Lord as a covenant of salt forever. Here, salt symbolizes the eternal and unchanging nature of God's promises. It signifies that God's covenant with his people is enduring, steadfast, and irrevocable. Similarly, in 2 Chronicles 13.5, we see another reference to a covenant of salt when God made David and his descendants the kings over Israel forever. The use of salt in this context reaffirms that God's promises are not fleeting or subject to change. They are as enduring as salt itself. The salt covenant reminds us that God's word is trustworthy, his promises are secure, and his love for us is everlasting. For us as believers, this attribute of salt challenges us to examine the covenants we have made with God and with others. Are we living as faithful covenant partners, honoring our commitments to God with the same steadfastness that He shows us? Are we upholding our promises to love, serve, and obey Him, even when it is difficult or costly? When we understand salt as an instrument of covenant, we see that it is not only a symbol of God's faithfulness, but also a call to our own faithfulness. It beckons us to remain loyal to God, to trust His promises, and to fulfill our part in the divine agreement He has established with us. As we walk in this covenant relationship, we are led to consider the third attribute of salt, its connection to divine justice. The third spiritual attribute of salt is its connection to divine justice. Throughout Scripture, salt is often associated with judgment and justice, reminding us of God's righteous character and His unwavering commitment to uphold justice. Consider the story of Lot's wife in Genesis 19.26. As God rained down fire and brimstone upon the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot and his family were warned to flee without looking back. However, Lot's wife disobeyed this command and looked back, longing for the life she was leaving behind. 
Instantly, she was turned into a pillar of salt. This transformation was not a random punishment. It was a deliberate act that carried deep spiritual meaning. Salt here serves as a stark reminder of the seriousness of God's justice. It tells us that God's commands are not to be taken lightly, and His judgment is swift and sure. But it also reveals His mercy. While justice was enacted upon Lot's wife, mercy was extended to Lot and his daughters. Salt becomes a dual symbol of judgment and grace. Another example of salt as a symbol of justice is found in Judges 9.45, where Abimelech sowed salt into the fields of Shechem after defeating the city, rendering the land barren and unproductive. This act of salting the earth was a common practice in ancient times to curse the land, ensuring that it could no longer sustain life. In this context, salt represented the consequences of rebellion and disobedience, a lasting testimony to the weight of divine justice. These examples show us that while God is merciful, He is also just. His justice is not arbitrary or vindictive, but is rooted in His holy character. He desires that all people live in righteousness, and He will act against sin to uphold His standards of holiness. As salt represents God's justice, it calls us to live justly, to act righteously, and to uphold truth and integrity in every aspect of our lives. Understanding Salt's role in divine justice brings us back to our own need for repentance and alignment with God's will. It challenges us to examine our hearts, to confess our sins, and to seek His forgiveness. And it points us back to the first attribute of Salt, purification, reminding us that God's justice and mercy are always intertwined. Now that we have explored these three spiritual attributes of Salt, purification, covenant, and justice, it becomes clear that they are not isolated concepts, but deeply interconnected. They form a divine triad that reflects the fullness of God's character and His intentions for us. Purification is essential for entering into covenant with God. Without being cleansed of our sins, we cannot stand in His holy presence or partake in the blessings of His covenant. This purification is made possible through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who, like salt, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Once purified, we are invited into a covenant relationship with God, a relationship that is sealed with the promise of salt. This covenant calls us to live in faithfulness and obedience, mirroring God's own steadfastness toward us. But to remain in this covenant, we must also embrace God's justice, acknowledging His authority to judge sin and striving to live in a way that reflects His righteousness. Justice, therefore, reinforces both purification and covenant. It reminds us of the seriousness of our commitment to God and the consequences of straying from His ways. It is a call to live in integrity, to seek justice for others, and to align our hearts with God's holy standard. By seeing how these three attributes are woven together, we begin to understand the comprehensive role that salt plays in the spiritual life. It is a tool that God uses to teach us about His nature and His expectations for us as His children. Having examined the three spiritual attributes of salt, purification, covenant, and justice, we are now prepared to explore how these attributes are illustrated in various biblical examples. Each example will provide us with a deeper understanding of how salt is used in Scripture to convey God's message, His purposes, and His dealings with humanity. Through these examples, we will see how God has consistently used salt to teach His people about holiness, faithfulness, and righteousness. We will discover that these ancient stories are not just historical accounts, but timeless lessons that speak directly to our lives today. As we move forward, let us keep these three attributes in mind and look for their presence in the biblical narratives. They will serve as guideposts, helping us to interpret the stories and apply their truths to our own spiritual journeys. And in doing so, we will be drawn closer to the heart of God, learning to live as His salt of the earth, embodying His purity, faithfulness, and justice in a world that desperately needs His light. Our journey into the biblical examples of salt begins with one of the most haunting and thought-provoking stories in Scripture, the tale of Lot's wife. As we find in Genesis 19, God decided to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah due to their pervasive wickedness. Lot, his wife, and their daughters were given a chance to escape the impending judgment, but they were commanded not to look back as they fled. Yet Lot's wife, disobeying this divine directive, 
turned to gaze upon the city she was... Why salt? The choice of this specific substance is far from arbitrary. In transforming Lot's wife into a pillar of salt, God wasn't just punishing her for disobedience. He was making a profound statement. Salt in this context is a symbol of divine judgment and a warning against looking back with longing to a life from which God has called us to separate. Lot's wife's fate illustrates the seriousness with which God regards our allegiance to him and his commands. Her transformation into salt stands as a permanent monument to the consequences of disobedience and hesitation in the face of God's call to move forward. It challenges us to examine our own hearts. Are we like Lot's wife, tempted to look back, to cling to the comfort of our old lives, even when God has clearly called us to step into new territory? This stark example not only warns of the dangers of disobedience, but also highlights the purity and decisiveness of God's justice, which we explored in the previous topic. The story of Lot's wife sets the stage for understanding salt as both a symbol of judgment and a call to purity and unwavering commitment to God's direction. With this foundation, we turn to another biblical narrative where salt is used, not as an instrument of judgment, but as a means of restoration and healing. From the dry, lifeless pillar of salt in Genesis, we move to a refreshing story of restoration in 2 Kings 2 19 22, where the prophet Elisha uses salt to heal the waters of Jericho. The people of Jericho came to Elisha with a desperate plea. Their city's water was bad, and the land was unproductive, causing suffering and hardship. In response, Elisha asked for a new bowl filled with salt, which he cast into the spring of water, proclaiming, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From now, in this story we see a remarkable shift in the use of salt, from a symbol of judgment to a symbol of life and healing. Elisha's act of throwing salt into the spring was a prophetic gesture, demonstrating that God can transform what is bitter and barren into something sweet and fruitful. Here, salt represents the power of God's word to cleanse and purify, turning curses into blessings and death into life. This account is a powerful reminder that God is in the business of restoration. Just as Elisha used salt to purify the waters and renew the land, God invites us to allow his word and spirit to purify our hearts, minds, and lives. When we bring the salt of God's truth into the bitter places of our lives, our struggles, our pains, our regrets, we open the way for his healing and transformation. Elisha's use of salt also connects us back to its role as a purifying agent, which we explored earlier. It reinforces the idea that God's tools for restoration are often simple but profound, ordinary but extraordinarily powerful. As we continue, we see salt used in another context, one that reinforces its role in God's covenant with his people. The narrative of salt continues through the Old Testament with its presence in the grain offerings described in Leviticus 2.13. You shall season all your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of the covenant with your God be missing from your grain offering. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. This command seems curious at first glance. Why should salt be added to these offerings? In the sacrificial system of the Old Testament, Salt was added to the grain offerings as a reminder of God's covenant with Israel. This was not just any covenant, it was a covenant of salt, a phrase that indicated the enduring and unbreakable nature of God's promises. Salt, known for its preservative qualities, symbolized the eternal nature of this covenant, God's faithfulness to his people and his promise to preserve them. Adding salt to the offerings ensured that they were acceptable to God, symbolizing purity preservation, and permanence. The grain offerings, like all sacrifices, pointed forward to the ultimate sacrifice of Christ, who fulfilled the law and established a new covenant with his blood, a covenant also characterized by purity, preservation, and permanence. This biblical example emphasizes that God's relationship with his people is built on his unwavering commitment, one that will not change or decay over time. It invites us to participate in that covenant by offering our own lives to God, seasoned with the salt of commitment, purity, and faithfulness. Just as salt was added to grain offerings to make them holy and acceptable, so too are we called to live lives that are set apart for God, 
marked by the enduring qualities of salt. From the grain offerings, we now move to a broader cultural context where salt has a deep and lasting significance, helping us understand its role in human relationships and divine covenants. Salt's presence in biblical narratives extends beyond the specific rituals and sacrifices of Israel. It also serves as a profound sign of God's unfailing covenant with His people. In cultures of the ancient Near East, salt was not only a commodity, but also a powerful symbol of trust and loyalty. To share salt with someone was to enter into a binding agreement of friendship and faithfulness, one that could not be easily broken. In 2 Chronicles 13.5, we read about the covenant of salt God made with David, establishing his descendants as the rightful kings over Israel. This covenant, sealed with salt, was a declaration of God's unwavering commitment to David's lineage, despite the challenges and failures that would come. It was a promise that God would remain faithful, preserving his people and his plans through every trial. This covenant of salt reinforces the theme we have seen throughout these examples. God's faithfulness endures. Just as salt does not lose its flavor or preserving power, so God's promises remain sure and unchanging. He is a covenant-keeping God, and His word stands firm through every generation. In our own lives, the covenant of salt invites us to reflect on the reliability of God's promises. Even when circumstances seem to contradict His words, we can trust that He is faithful. Salt becomes a symbol of this unbreakable commitment, a reminder that God will never forsake His people or abandon His plans. This understanding naturally leads us to consider the modern relevance of these ancient examples. What does all this mean for us today? How do we take these lessons from salt and apply them to our spiritual lives in a contemporary context? As we move from the biblical narratives to a broader cultural understanding, we see that salt holds a special place not only in the scriptures, but also in the customs and traditions of the ancient world. In many Eastern cultures, salt symbolized loyalty, fidelity, and a commitment to truth. Covenants made with salt were considered sacred and binding, often sealed with the sharing of bread and salt, creating a deep bond of trust and mutual respect. This cultural significance of salt sheds light on its spiritual symbolism in the Bible. When God used salt in His covenants, He was speaking in a language His people understood, a language that communicated permanence, loyalty, and unbreakable commitment. He was showing that His promises are not fleeting or fragile, but are built on the most enduring of foundations. Today, these cultural insights help us grasp the weight of God's promises to us. In a world where commitments are often broken and words are easily forgotten, God's covenant of salt stands as a beacon of His faithfulness and reliability. It reminds us that we are part of a divine agreement that transcends time and culture, grounded in the unchanging nature of God Himself. Understanding the cultural and biblical context of salt deepens our appreciation for its spiritual significance. It helps us see that God's use of salt in the scriptures is not random, but is laden with meaning, reflecting His character and His eternal purposes. As we reflect on these examples, we are drawn to consider how we can use the lessons of salt in our own spiritual journeys. How do we live as people of the covenant, marked by purity, faithfulness, and commitment to God's word? The answers to these questions prepare us to move forward, understanding the right and wrong uses of salt and ensuring that our actions align with God's will and purposes. By looking at these biblical examples, we see that salt is far more than a seasoning or preservative. It is a symbol of God's judgment, healing, covenant, and faithfulness. It teaches us about His justice, mercy, and love, and it invites us to participate in His divine plan, living as His salt of the earth, bringing His purity, truth, and grace to a world in need. Salt's spiritual significance is not confined to the pages of the Bible alone. It extends into the very fabric of ancient Eastern culture. In these societies, Salt was much more than a mere seasoning or preservative. It was a symbol of deep loyalty, commitment, and enduring relationship. To share salt with another person was to enter into a bond of trust and fidelity that was considered sacred and binding. This cultural symbolism sheds light on why salt appears so frequently in biblical narratives. In many Eastern cultures, when two parties shared a meal that included salt, it was seen as a covenantal act an agreement that could not be broken without dire consequences. It was a sign that both parties would remain faithful to their word, 
no matter what challenges might arise. Salt, in this context, was a witness to the promises made and a guarantor of the commitment undertaken. Such a practice illuminates the deeper spiritual meaning behind God's use of salt in His covenants with His people. When God makes a covenant of salt with His followers, He is speaking in a language that resonates with their cultural understanding. He is declaring that His promises are as unbreakable as the salt covenants they themselves know so well, eternal, steadfast, and absolutely trustworthy. Reflecting on salt's role as a symbol of loyalty and commitment encourages us to examine our own relationship with God. Are we truly loyal to Him in every area of our lives? Do we treat our relationship with Him as a sacred bond, as binding and unbreakable as those ancient covenants sealed with salt? This reflection leads us naturally to explore how salt was used to seal covenants and agreements in these cultures, reinforcing our understanding of its spiritual depth. In ancient times, salt was often used to seal covenants and agreements between individuals, tribes, and even nations. The act of eating salt together, or sprinkling it during a covenant ceremony, was a powerful symbol that bound the participants in a pact of peace, loyalty, and mutual protection. It was believed that salt, with its properties of preservation, also preserved the integrity of the agreement. Consider the imagery of a salt covenant. In this practice, two parties might eat bread dipped in salt or exchange salt as a sign of their agreement. This act was not a casual gesture. It was deeply meaningful. By sharing salt, they were committing themselves to a relationship that transcended mere words. It was a relationship marked by honor, trust, and a mutual commitment to fulfill their promises. This practice helps us understand why God chose to describe His covenant with Israel as a covenant of salt. When He spoke of a salt covenant, He was emphasizing the seriousness and permanence of His commitment to His people. He was declaring that His promises were not just words, but were sealed with a sacred bond that could not be broken. His covenant was not temporary or conditional. It was as lasting and unchanging as salt itself. For us today, this understanding invites a deeper reflection on our own commitments to God and to one another. Do we treat our promises with the same gravity and seriousness as those who entered into salt covenants? Are we faithful to our word, to our relationships, and to our responsibilities, knowing that our commitments are witnessed by God. This thought naturally leads us to consider the parallels between these cultural practices and the biblical understanding of salt. The parallels between ancient cultural practices and biblical teachings about salt are striking. In both contexts, salt symbolizes a commitment that is meant to endure, a relationship built on trust, fidelity, and mutual respect. Whether it is a tribal agreement sealed with salt or God's covenant with His people, the message is the same. True relationships are unbreakable, built on a foundation of trust and commitment. When we read about the covenant of salt in the Bible, we should understand it as a reflection of these ancient practices. God was communicating His intentions in a way that His people could understand, a way that resonated deeply with their cultural norms and values. He was saying, in effect, I am entering into a covenant with you that is as serious and binding as the salt covenants you make with one another. My commitment to you is forever. It will not fade or fail. Understanding these cultural parallels deepens our appreciation of God's faithfulness. It helps us grasp the gravity and significance of His promises. Just as salt was an integral part of forming human covenants in ancient times, so it remains a powerful symbol of the divine covenant between God and His people today. But this symbolism also challenges us to reflect on our own faithfulness. Do we mirror the unbreakable loyalty that God shows us in our relationships with Him and with others? Are our commitments as steadfast as a covenant of salt? Reflecting on these questions leads us to consider how these cultural perspectives can expand our understanding of spiritual relationships. Reflecting on the cultural significance of salt helps us expand our understanding of spiritual relationships. Just as salt was used to seal human covenants, it also serves as a reminder of the sacred nature of our relationship with God. When we think of salt in this way, it prompts us to view our spiritual life not merely as a series of religious duties, but as a profound binding commitment to the Creator who has promised to be with us always.
Salt challenges us to deepen our sense of loyalty and fidelity in our spiritual walk. It calls us to examine whether our relationship with God reflects the seriousness and permanence of a covenant sealed with salt. Are we treating our faith journey with the gravity it deserves, understanding that it is a lifelong commitment to the one who is eternally faithful? In our relationships with others, salt encourages us to be trustworthy, reliable, and steadfast. It reminds us that our word should be as enduring as salt, unchanging and incorruptible. When we commit to love, serve, or help someone, do we do so with the same sincerity and faithfulness that God demonstrates toward us? This expanded view of spiritual relationships brings us back to the heart of what it means to be the salt of the earth. It is about living a life that reflects God's character, His purity, His faithfulness, and His justice. Understanding this helps us see why the Bible includes both warnings and guidance about the right and wrong use of salt, which is where our journey takes us next. Understanding the cultural and spiritual significance of salt sets the stage for discerning its right and wrong uses. In Scripture, we see that while salt has profound spiritual importance, it can also be misused or misunderstood. The Bible offers both positive examples, like the healing of Jericho's waters, and cautionary tales like the transformation of Lot's wife, showing us the dual nature of salt as both a blessing and a warning. The right use of salt aligns with God's purposes. It involves using salt as a symbol of His covenant, a tool for purification, and an agent of His justice. When we understand these purposes, we can rightly apply salt in our spiritual lives, using it as a reminder of God's faithfulness, a call to purity, and a standard for justice. However, the Bible also warns against the misuse of salt, treating it superstitiously or as a magical charm. Just as the Israelites were warned not to worship the bronze serpent, which God had once used to heal them, Numbers 21 4, 9, we are cautioned not to idolize or misuse salt, forgetting that it is merely a tool in the hands of a sovereign God. Understanding these warnings helps us navigate the fine line between reverence and superstition, it reminds us that all spiritual tools, including salt, must be used with discernment, always pointing us back to God Himself, rather than becoming ends in themselves. This brings us to the next topic, where we will explore these warnings in greater detail and consider how to use salt appropriately, always aligning with God's will and His purposes for our lives. By reflecting on the cultural significance of salt in the East and its parallels with biblical teachings, we gain a deeper understanding of its spiritual symbolism. We see that salt is far more than a common mineral. It is a profound symbol of loyalty, commitment, and enduring relationship, a symbol that challenges us to live with faithfulness and integrity in our relationship with God and with others. As we continue our journey, we are called to consider the right use of salt in our lives and to avoid the pitfalls of misunderstanding or misapplication. We are reminded that our spiritual practices should always draw us closer to God, not distract us from Him, and that in all things, we are to live as His salt of the earth, faithfully reflecting His character in a world that desperately needs His light. Salt, as we've explored, carries immense spiritual significance, representing purification, covenant, and divine justice. But with its profound symbolism comes a danger, the temptation to misuse or misunderstand its purpose. Throughout history, there have been moments when what God intended as a sacred symbol was twisted into superstition or ritualistic practices devoid of true faith. Consider the Israelites' experience with the bronze serpent in the wilderness, Numbers 21 4, 9. Initially, God instructed Moses to make a bronze serpent and lift it on a pole so that whoever looked upon it would be healed from snake bites. This bronze serpent was a tool for divine healing a tangible sign of God's mercy and grace. Yet, over time, the Israelites began to worship it as an idol, forgetting that it was merely a symbol pointing to the power of God. The same risk applies to our understanding of salt. While salt is a powerful spiritual tool, it is not a magic charm. The Bible warns us against using it superstitiously, believing that sprinkling salt around our homes or carrying it in our pockets will somehow ward off evil or bring us good luck. Such practices border on idolatry, diverting our focus from God Himself to the material substance He created. The proper use of salt is always grounded in faith and obedience to God's will, not in superstitious rituals. 
When we begin to treat salt as an end in itself, we lose sight of its true spiritual significance and risk falling into the same trap as the Israelites with the bronze serpent. Understanding this helps us see how salt should be rightly used, not as a mystical object, but as a reminder of God's presence and power. To use salt correctly in our spiritual lives, we must understand its intended purpose. It is a tool of faith, not an object of worship. Just as the bronze serpent was meant to point the Israelites toward God's healing power, salt is intended to direct our hearts and minds toward God's covenant, His purifying work, and His justice. When we use salt, it should be with the recognition that it is God who sanctifies, preserves, and judges, not the salt itself. For example, when we see salt in our kitchens or on our dining tables, it can serve as a powerful visual reminder of our role as the salt of the earth. Matthew 5.13 It can prompt us to pray for purity in our hearts, to renew our commitment to God's covenant, and to act justly in all our dealings. This is the right use of salt, a symbol that points us back to God and deepens our walk with Him. Moreover, in prayer or spiritual warfare, we might symbolically use salt as Elisha did when he purified the waters of Jericho, 3 Kings 2, 19, 22. However, we must always remember that it is not the salt that holds the power, but the God who commands the universe. Salt is merely a tool that expresses our faith in God's power to cleanse, heal, and restore. Using salt in this way aligns with its biblical purpose. It is a means of expressing faith, not a replacement for faith. When our hearts are in the right place, using salt becomes a rich, meaningful practice that draws us closer to God rather than leading us astray. This understanding naturally leads us to consider practical ways to use salt in our spiritual lives. Now that we understand the correct perspective on salt as a tool of faith, not worship, we can explore practical ways to use it spiritually, always keeping in mind its biblical symbolism and purpose. In prayer and reflection, you might keep a small container of salt on your prayer table or altar. When you see it, let it remind you of your role as the salt of the earth and your calling to purity, preservation, and faithful commitment to God. Use it as a prompt for prayers of confession, asking God to cleanse your heart and make you holy as He is holy. During spiritual warfare, when facing spiritual battles, you can use salt as a tangible expression of your faith in God's authority over dark. Using salt appropriately requires discernment and a commitment to align our actions with God's will. Salt, like any other spiritual tool, must be used in ways that honor God and reflect His character. When we use salt symbolically, it should always be done in the context of prayer, humility, and obedience, recognizing that it is God who empowers, purifies, and preserves, not the salt itself. To align our actions with God's will, we must be guided by Scripture and the Holy Spirit. We must avoid superstitions and practices that are not grounded in biblical truth. Instead, our focus should be on living lives that reflect the qualities of salt, purity, faithfulness, and justice. This means striving to be true to our commitments, acting with integrity, and being agents of preservation in a world that often seems to be losing its way. Furthermore, we must ensure that our use of salt does not become a distraction from what is most important, our relationship with God. If ever the use of salt becomes more about ritual than relationship, more about the act than the heart behind it, we risk losing the very essence of what salt is meant to signify. God desires that our actions flow from a genuine love for Him, not from mere habit or tradition. As we align our actions with God's will, we begin to see how the spiritual tools He gives us, like salt, can enhance our faith journey rather than hinder it. This understanding naturally leads us to the broader call to combine faith, obedience, and action. Understanding the right and wrong uses of salt brings us to a crucial realization. Faith, obedience, and action must always go hand in hand. Faith without action is dead, James 2.17, and obedience without faith is mere legalism. God calls us to live out our faith in tangible ways, using the tools He provides, like salt to manifest His presence and power in the world. To be the salt of the earth means actively engaging in the spiritual battles around us. It means living lives that are pure, faithful, and just, reflecting God's character in every decision and action. It means using the gifts and resources God gives us to make a difference, 
to bring healing where there is brokenness, and to preserve truth in a world that often distorts it. This call to faith, obedience, and action is not a burden, but a privilege. It is an invitation to participate in God's redemptive work, to be His hands and feet in a world that desperately needs His love and grace. When we understand this, we realize that salt is not just a symbol. It is a call to live out our identity as followers of Christ in every area of our lives. By preparing ourselves for this call, we are ready to explore how faith, obedience, and action work together to bring about God's purposes. We will discover that these three elements are not separate, but are intricately woven together, forming the foundation of a life lived in full alignment with God's will. By understanding the right and wrong uses of salt, we gain clarity on how to incorporate its spiritual symbolism into our daily lives. We learn to avoid superstition and idolatry, using salt as a tool of faith that always points us back to God. We recognize the importance of aligning our actions with His will, ensuring that every use of salt in our spiritual practice is rooted in Scripture and guided by the Holy Spirit. This understanding prepares us to embrace the broader call to live lives of faith, obedience, and action. It invites us to reflect deeply on how we can be the salt of the earth, bringing God's purity, faithfulness, and justice into every corner of our world. As we continue our journey, we will explore how to live out this call in practical, impactful ways, making the most of every opportunity to glorify God and serve His purposes. In the realm of Christian faith, the words of James resonate with a profound urgency. Faith without works is dead. James 2.26 this principle is not merely a theoretical assertion, but a living reality that demands action. Faith, in its purest form, is not a static belief, but a dynamic force that propels us into action. Imagine a tree planted by a riverbank, lush and green, its branches stretching out to receive the sunlight. This tree does not just exist, it grows, bears fruit, and contributes to its environment. Similarly, our faith, when nurtured, should yield tangible results. It should be reflected in our deeds, our interactions, and our responses to the world around us. Our faith is like the tree's roots, deeply embedded in the soil of our relationship with God. But roots alone do not define the health of the tree. The branches, the leaves, and the fruit demonstrate its vitality. Our works are the outward expression of our inward faith. They are the fruits that reveal the depth and authenticity of our belief. When our actions align with our faith, they bear witness to the transformative power of Christ in our lives. To bring our faith to fruition, we must integrate prayer, fasting, and obedience into our spiritual discipline. Each of these elements plays a vital role in nurturing a robust and effective faith. Prayer is the lifeline to our spiritual vitality. It is the channel through which we communicate with God, seek His guidance, and align our will with His. Through prayer, we express our dependence on God and invite His presence into our lives. It is in the quiet moments of prayer that we find clarity and strength to act in accordance with His will. Fasting complements prayer by stripping away the distractions and desires that cloud our vision. It is a practice of self-denial that shifts our focus from the temporal to the eternal. When we fast, we make space for spiritual growth, allowing God to speak to us with greater clarity. Fasting is not just about abstaining from food, but about surrendering our desires and making room for God's desires to take root in our lives. Obedience is the natural outgrowth of prayer and fasting. It is the practical application of the insights and strength we gain through these practices. Obedience involves following God's commands and living out His instructions in our daily lives. It is not always easy, but it is the pathway to spiritual maturity and alignment with God's purpose. Combining prayer, fasting, and obedience creates a powerful synergy. Each practice reinforces the other, leading to a deeper, more authentic expression of faith. This triad equips us to live out our beliefs with conviction and integrity, transforming our faith from mere words into a living, active force. As we delve into the practical application of our faith, we must recognize the role of spiritual tools, including salt, in fulfilling divine purposes. Spiritual tools are not magical objects, but symbols and instruments through which God's power and presence are manifested. Salt, as we have explored in previous topics, holds significant spiritual symbolism. It represents purification, covenant, and divine justice. 
When used appropriately, it serves as a reminder of God's promises and a tool for spiritual warfare. In practical terms, using spiritual tools involves understanding their purpose and employing them in ways that align with God's will. Salt, for instance, can be used symbolically in prayer and worship to signify purification and commitment. It is not about the physical substance, but the spiritual reality it represents. When we use these tools with the right understanding, we honor God and advance His kingdom. Each spiritual tool, from salt to prayer, serves to deepen our relationship with God and enhance our effectiveness in His service. They help us navigate spiritual battles, uphold divine covenants, and live out God's justice. By using these tools in alignment with His purposes, we can ensure that our faith is expressed in ways that honor Him and impact the world. Living a life of faith is not a static state, but an ongoing process of transformation. It involves continuously aligning our lives with God's will and allowing His power to reshape us. This transformation is a journey, not a destination, marked by growth, challenges, and moments of profound change. Transformation begins with a willingness to change. It requires us to surrender our old ways of thinking and behaving and embrace a new identity in Christ. This involves letting go of past habits and attitudes that hinder our spiritual growth and adopting new ones that reflect our faith. The process of transformation is both personal and communal. Individually, we are called to be more like Christ, reflecting His character and love in our actions and attitudes. Communally, we are called to support one another in this journey, encouraging and holding each other accountable. The body of Christ works together to grow and mature in faith, each member contributing to the overall health and effectiveness of the church. Transformation also involves resilience and perseverance. It is not always easy to change, and there will be moments of struggle and doubt. However, it is in these moments that our faith is tested and strengthened. By relying on God's grace and power, we can navigate these challenges and emerge more resilient and transformed. As we conclude this journey through the power of salt and its spiritual significance, we are invited to deepen our relationship with Christ. This invitation is a call to intimacy and transformation, a call to walk closely with Him and experience His transformative love and grace. A deeper relationship with Christ involves more than understanding theological concepts. It requires a personal encounter with His presence. It means opening our hearts to Him, allowing His love to penetrate our lives, and responding to His call with obedience and faith. In practical terms, deepening our relationship with Christ involves regular communion with Him through prayer, studying His Word, and participating in the life of the Church. It also involves living out our faith in ways that reflect His character and mission. This invitation is not a one-time event, but a lifelong journey. It is an ongoing process of growing in understanding, love, and obedience. As we accept this invitation, we embark on a path of spiritual discovery and transformation that leads us closer to the heart of God. In summary, the journey from understanding the power of salt to living a life of faith and transformation is a profound and enriching experience. Each step builds on the previous one, guiding us from theoretical knowledge to practical application and deepening our relationship with Christ. As we embrace this journey, we are invited to live out our faith with authenticity, purpose, and passion, making a meaningful impact on the world around us.